Hello and welcome to the first in a new series of video lessons for Istanbul Mehmet with me, Will Wainwright. Each of these lessons we're going to be looking at, you know, various topics um, ranging from beginner stuff to all the way up to advanced and everything in between. Um, for this lesson in particular, we're going to be looking at pushing the one. So what I mean by that is displacing the crash that would normally go on beat one um, and placing it somewhere else and kind of the effect that can give grooves and fills and things like that. Um, now this isn't always going to work musically. Um, you do need to kind of be aware that it's quite an, you know, a bold statement, so to speak. If someone else in the band is going with you, then great. Um, if you're doing it on your own and just playing drums, cool, it works. Um, but in a musical situation, obviously it, it needs to fit. But let's have a little look at it anyway and have a bit of fun, okay? Let's get started. Okay, let's get started with example one. Now, before we do, um, if you're on the Istanbul Mehmet website, scroll down, you'll see uh, the PDF there for the transcriptions for all these exercises. If you're on YouTube or something like that, maybe head over there, get a copy of that, print it out if you want, um, or at least save a copy of it so you've got that. Don't worry, I will be explaining everything anyway, so you don't need to have that sheet, but it's just nice to have that as well, okay? So for our first one, all we're gonna be doing is playing snare first, floor, floor, right left right left and just warming that up okay so let's give this one a go In example two, we've replaced the last floor tom with a bass drum. So instead of going right, left, right, left, we're now going right, left, right, bass. Let's loop this and warm it up. Here we go. Now in example three, we've kind of combined example one and example two. So what I mean by that is we're still playing right, left, right bass from example two, but we're also playing a left hand on the app as well. Now instead of playing it on the floor tom, we're gonna to move that left hand up to the crash cymbal. So it's the left hand playing the crash cymbal with the bass drum, okay? Very important to use the right hand, so we're gonna go right, left, right, left. Okay, here we go. On to example four. So now we're going to put example one into context. So we're just putting it on beat four and we're going to do just one of them right, left, right, left, crash and come back in. Okay, fairly straightforward. Hopefully, this is a good warm up for what's to come. Let's have a go.
in example five, we're now playing example two, but in context. So same thing as before on beat four, we're going to be playing uh, our phrase, just one beat's worth of it. So this case, it's right, left, right, bass, and then coming in with a crash on the next bar, okay? Here we go. In example six, we're now going to be playing example three into context. So on beat four, we're going to be playing right, left, right, and then a crash with the left hand and that bass drum at the same time. Um, and then on the next bar, doing another crash. We get two crashes back to back, left, right. Now, if you've got two crashes on your kit, great, use them. Um, if you've only got one, yes, you could just hit that one crash, but if you've got a nice versatile ride symbol, Think about crashing on that. Now, not every ride symbol is gonna be crashable if it's a really, really heavy ride. Um, but usually, if you've got a really heavy ride, you've probably got a second crash. Um, I really love my uh, Hammer Warm ride. Although it is a fairly heavy symbol, it's so crashable. Um, so I can really recommend that. Um, but yeah, think about maybe crashing on that ride. So let's give this one a go, okay? Here we go. Okay, example seven. So this is the whole point of the lesson, okay? This is where we start displacing beat one of the second bar and pushing that one, okay? Now we do have a push, technically speaking, say in the, the, the previous ones where we're putting the crash in on the air, but we're still playing beat one, which gives us that really heavy downbeat feel. Here, because we don't come in until the end of one and the second bar, we really are pushing it, okay? It's a really cool pattern, it's a really cool phrase where we go four E and uh, and two, okay? Take your time, warm this one up, but let's have a listen to how it goes, okay? Here we go.
Okay, great. So that previous exercise for me is really great, okay? I think it's a really good phrase. I love how that push of coming back in on the and works and feels, and I think it sounds really cool, okay? But I've taken it one step further with example eight. So we're playing the same, exact same pattern, except for we're not putting a crash with the bass drum on the and of one on the second bar. We're gonna put that crash with a snare on beat two, okay? So we're still playing the bass drum. Da 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 boom, boom, gap, but that crash comes in one later. Okay, we're elongating and extending that feel of that push, okay? Now this is good. Like I said, I still think number seven is slightly more musical, slightly more usable, slightly nicer, but it's nice to hear how this would sound as well, okay? So let's give it a go. Okay, wonderful. I hope you enjoyed that lesson. Next time we're going to be doing a few different things with this, okay? So in, in our second lesson we're going to be putting some fills in with it um, and mixing it up a little bit more. Maybe changing instead of using that, that crash, maybe try a hi-hat bark and some other little things, okay? But for now, work through these, really get them, because next time we're going to be kind of building on it, okay? Wonderful. Until next time, take care. Bye.